bonjour and welcome to uh, yeah Corona basically where I want to deal with some unfinished business because last episode I said I was going to test an SUV but I got a 2 plus 2 GT car and this time I ordered a luxury saloon in the likes of S-Class and Audi A8 and I got an SUV I can't see anything I hate these things so anyway I was uh, going to pick up my car and the lady behind the counter said she they don't have any luxury saloons or whatever available and the only thing that you can give me is an Audi Q7 I was like okay uh, that's hardly a replacement for a luxury saloon is it and she couldn't really get my point because she said yeah but it's pretty luxurious car that got me thinking are these SUVs, Audi Q7, BMW X5, uh, Mercedes GLE, Lexus RX, whatever, have they become so good, so luxurious that they are, that they can be considered as a serious alternative to luxury saloons, like with added practicality? So I want to find that out and uh, in order to do that, I'm going to go uh, south, so Corona kind of limits me to where I can go. So I chose to go to Côte d'Azur and that should give me enough time to have a look at this car. Alrighty, set and is set. Uh, let's get going. Mm -hmm. So in terms of noise installation, I can tell right off the bat that I think these SUVs have surpassed luxury saloons. It's especially road noise is a lot quieter. Add to that that you can option in for a noise insulating uh, double glazing for basically all of these. The noise insulation is better in lower and middle speeds, but in higher speeds the wind noise gets intrusive, like now I'm driving at 120 kph, that's, I don't know, 70, 80 miles an hour, something like that, and I can hear the wind noise a lot more, but it's not too bad, I think it's still okay. Like another thing that I notice is that the, the ride comfort cannot quite compete with the one of a luxury saloon. Having said that, it's not bad or anything. Yeah, well, here I can kind of talk about my first impressions about this car in particular. Uh, the Audi Q7. Yeah, it's big and I don't think it's very good looking, but I don't give it really a shit about the uh, looks of the car. But it doesn't look really impressive or special or it looks very generic. And it's the same story in here. Um, I think this entire infotainment system is pretty confusing. Uh, now, where the Mercedes that I drove last year, I guess, about the same time, had two screens, none of which were touch screen. This car does not have any manual control or any analog control that you can interface with, which comes with a lot of problems, in my opinion. Um, first of all, like you have your fingerprints everywhere. It's not really helped by the fact that everything is covered in glossy black plastic, so this entire thing is riddled with dust, fingerprints, and whatever. Another thing is that they also put the climate control on a touch screen. There is no analog interface or whatever. Even in the rear, there's a little screen where you can adjust everything. Um, I don't think that this is a particularly good idea. Like an analog temperature adjustment, whatever, is not as likely to break as this touch screen. And um, now it detects that I'm off road, which I'm not. What are you saying? I'm on the road. It's perfectly fine. You want to pump up the car? No, you're not off road. Fuck. <laughs> what 
technology. Verkehrsdienst. Die 107 Eilenburg Rimmer zwischen Schmölen und Pausitz läuft ein Kind. A2 Richtung. Saloon at these higher speeds, like about 200 kph and above, is still better. It builds speed better with the same engine, it would be quicker. Um, but I wasn't expecting it to be this good, like this stable and this quiet. Okay, I uh, arrived at my um, stop for the night. That was a uh, almost 10 hour drive. Seats are okay, it could be a little bit more comfortable, but other than that, it was a very smooth journey. The fuel consumption figure says 6.8 liters, 100 kilometers. That is uh, MPG US 34.6 and MPG UK 41.5. Welcome to summer holiday day two. Wow! I mean, it's 17 degrees Celsius, so maybe 63 Fahrenheit, and it's pouring down. That doesn't say summer holiday to you. I don't know what it is. Oh! Grand Canal? Uh, I think we are approaching France now. I guess we're in France. Um, I think that does not mean that we can go on 30 now. No, no, because it's 100. You see, it says 110 in rain. You know that, and still, you said it 230. Are we on the road again? Don't understand this gas pedal. 
nothing, 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 full throttle. It's not 70 anymore. You're seriously still assuming it's raining. This is the worst lane this system I've ever seen. Now it bounces off the left line, uh, off the right line. Again, it waits until it crosses it basically and then it bounces off. It tells me to take over the steering, of course, because the point of having an automated steering is that you do it. Like, what, what, why can it preemptively correct before it crosses the line? Ah! It's not very smooth, you really get thrown around in the car. I mean, you test shit, right? That's, you don't, you don't test this and say it's okay. That's the worst lane assist thing I've ever seen. And you cannot turn it off. And another thing, this screen is really getting hot. Like, you have to touch it in order to do shit, but it's, it's really hot. Again, how do you test this? And don't come across that. The engine sounds a bit weird. No, there's not 80 here. The 80 is for the lorries. It says 3.5 tons. sur l'autoroute A8, direction Aix-en-Provence. Entre la sortie 40 mont de lieu et les adrets de l'Estérel, la sortie 39, une poubelle sur la voie la plus à gauche, au kilomètre 156. Un incendie aussi de végétation sur l'aire de Condumi, à proximité en tout cas sur l'autoroute A8, direction Aix-en-Provence, 13 km après la jonction vers la 57 et au kilomètre 86, privilégiez la voie du milieu pour circuler en toute sécurité. Dans la région de Toulon, je vous le disais, le trafic est chargé entre 5 et 10 minutes maximum pour traverser les difficultés. And so, I uh, set off this morning with uh, 17 degrees and rain, and now I'm arrived in San Rafael on the Côte d'Azur, where it is 35 degrees and blue sky. I changed the aircon to eco mode, and apparently it saved a whole lot of fuel. So I ended up yesterday, I think, with 6.8 liters, 100 kilometers. Today it's 6.5. 
So let's see what this is in um, MPG. Uh, MPG US uh, 36.5, MPG UK 43.8. So welcome to the Côte d'Azur and uh, to explore it a little bit I thought about a route that would take me along the coastline. Um, I've written it down somewhere. I hope I find everything and we start with... Time to leave uh, the beautiful Côte d'Azur and um, during my time here I was um, driving it along the coastline of the Côte d'Azur and other areas and that surfaced a lot of issues with it. So I'm going to talk about all this again in the final thoughts section. Um, yeah, for now it's time to leave, sad, but uh, let's we'll get back home. Yeah. So I found the issue with the lane keep assist. If you turn it off, it's not turned off. It now goes, you see, into this rubbish mode where it just throws you from one side of the lane to the other. I, I, I don't get it. Why, why isn't it turned off? If I turn it off, then it's... Why isn't it turned off? And if I turn it on, or if it turns on by itself again, why isn't it going into the mode that is working properly? Because now I'm in the right mode and you see it keeps me gently inside the lane just as it should. Either make it so that it turns off completely or if it auto activates then just go into the correct mode. It works. Yes, 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 yes. So uh, I, uh, the, the entire center screen just turned off. Uh -huh, now it's restarting again, obviously. Okay, now it's back again. I mean, you, I think you can turn it off, but you can't just the top screen. You turn the screen off, and it, that's obviously not what happened. So I found another issue that I have with this cars that have this glossy plastics everywhere it's because it's reflecting as fuck this I don't know how much you can
Okay, it's now now it says a hundred somewhere. It breaks. There is no change in speed limit. Even the, even its own sign says there's no speed limit here. It changed the speed. Now it changes up again. There's no what? All right. So welcome to what was supposed to be the interior section of this video. Um, I was ready to talk about the various aspects of this interior, um, for instance about the great amount of space in the back that you have, uh, and some other stuff like limited storage space in the front, but um, I came across some more issues, like I have um, bits of the seat track cover, whatever, where the seat is sit on, um, came off. Um, the a uh, hood release cover came off and it kind of hit me that all these issues that I found are somewhat connected and are part of a larger problem in my opinion. And that's reason to worry. If a company tests a car before they release it, they're doing like I think several hundred thousand of kilometers of test driving. So if I come across all these issues in a week, I don't believe that they did not come across these issues. Okay, you could think that maybe I have a really bad apple that's a really bad car like this particular car is really bad but most of these issues are either sensor issues like not detecting signs detecting the wrong signs or there are issues with the software and the same thing goes for the uh, for the really bad throttle response and the slow dynamics of this car the engine is fine the gearbox is fine both of these individually are really good but combining them is what goes wrong. So and here's the part that gets me really worried. Like even if this is a bad app, even if I have an individually really bad car, that would still accommodate for maybe one or two of these issues. Maybe three max. But all of them? No. I don't believe that. In other cars, by other car manufacturers, I did not come across all these issues. So it's possible to make an adaptive cruise control that can read road signs correctly. A lane keep assist that you do not have to constantly wrestle or if you turn it off it stays off. So the question then is why? And that gets me back to the design. When I look at this exterior design it's like a brick with some wheels on it and it's like the same on the interior. It's like leather? I don't think so. Just some foam here and it's a straight line and then there's vents below that and then there's some space until you get to the glove compartment so they put a plaque there with which says quattro because quattro is great everybody likes quattro it's really the dullest most uninspired interior design i've ever seen i get the feeling that whoever did this and released this didn't really give a fuck I see that was what I was on about in the in the Mercedes. They put the stardust in the tail lights. Yeah, that is silly, but it's there. And they made this nice interior with the flowing lines and everything you touch was leather and real wood and metal. So it felt like somebody actually gave a fuck about what the car is like. So someone said like, you know, you're putting down 80, 90 grand. Let's give you something really, really nice. This is the antithesis of that. This feels like nobody gave a shit like yeah whatever it's, yeah it's fine just ship it this is really not good this is really kind of worrying and um, I'm now at the point where I say I cannot recommend this car to you don't don't buy it that's that's where I'm now I'm not here to sugarcoat anything I'm not here to bullshit you I'm not I'm here to give you my honest opinion I had this car for a week for 4,400 kilometers and I'm telling you, there's just too much wrong with it. Uh, are, there, are there things that I like about this car? Yes, yes. I like the amount of space in the back. It's really awesome. I, I, I wasn't even a 7 Series. You do not have that space in the back. Um, I, I, I love how quiet it is. Like It's ridiculously quiet. That's really, really good. Both of these things, by the way, in terms of 
having an SUV as a replacement for a luxury saloon is a, a valid point. The fuel economy is really awesome. Like I averaged, I don't know, something about 35 miles to get in the US, 40 maybe UK, six, somewhere between six and seven liters, 100 kilometers. For this big heavy car, this is really great. Um, so there are things that I like, but I think that all these things you can have in other cars as well. And along with that, you can have a working adaptive cruise control. You can have a touchscreen that does not burn your fingers. You can have an interior that does not fall apart. Uh, which brings me to the competition of this. Um, there is a, there's of course the X5 and the GLE. There's the Range Rover, which is not available as a seven-seater, but the Discovery is available as a seven-seater, but it's not that luxurious, I think. The Range Rover is a little bit more expensive than this. A lot more expensive than this. Um, there is, of course, the Lexus RX, which is also available as an RXL, which has seven seats. There is the Volvo XC90, I guess. So the um, concept that I spoke about earlier about having a SUV, this midsize SUV, replace a luxury saloon. Um, I think it depends on how much time you spend on the motorway and where. So in, in like in Germany on the on the autobahns and with pretty bad roads I think the luxury saloon is still ahead. Other than that, it was just as quiet. Uh, you can have, this is not fitted with, but you can have like comfort seats in all of these. Um, and uh, keep in mind, they are cheaper than luxury saloons and you have a lot of added practicality. <clears throat> you have a bigger boot, can tow a 3.5 ton trailer. So this has a lot of things going for it, like as a concept. And just don't think that the particular car that you should buy for that is the Audi Q7. I hate the way this ended. I wanted this to be a positive video. I wanted to feel good about my idea of replacing a luxury saloon with an equally luxurious but more practical and cheaper SUV. But old Buzz Aldrin here let me down. In the final attempt to redeem it, I thought all of these were just teething problems. Imagine my shock when I learned that this model is in its sixth year of production.